Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can check out new episodes of the show every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. If you missed an episode or want to get more information about the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Brian and Michael from How Do We. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to have you guys on the show. I, I think what you guys are doing is, is really interesting. But maybe before we kind of get into that, let's get to know each one of you a bit better and uh, kind of maybe give a quick intro and bio and kind of where you grew up, where you went to school. So, Brian, maybe we'll start with you. Sure, absolutely. Um, so, a little background on me. Uh, Previously, I was a former uh, United States um, Army member. I was in the uh, Cavalry Scout, and I was stationed down in Texas, uh, where I did a uh, one-year deployment to Iraq while serving. Uh, from there, I uh, decided to get out and kind of pursue a, uh, an educational degree, so I attended Illinois State University, okay. where I got a uh, bachelor's degree in entrepreneurship. Um, just, uh, this past year, I actually just got out of there in, uh, December. Nice. Um, and, and growing up actually, uh, kind of a funny story. Mike and I have actually been lifelong, uh, friends. We, we actually met in the fifth grade, I believe, and kind of just always gotten along. And we, uh, we grew up in Spring Grove, Spring Grove, Illinois, growing up there. And, uh, we always spent, spent, uh, our time together with great friends. And it wasn't until after the I was out of the military and kind of in school that uh, Mike approached me with kind of this idea of uh, this crowdfunding platform uh, for public public education at the time. Uh, and kind of Mike and I from there took it took it from there and have been scaling it ever since. No, that's great. I'm always curious to know stories of how kind of co-founders and stuff met. So. So, Mike, do you maybe want to give kind of a quick bio and intro of yourself? Absolutely. As, as Brian mentioned, uh, from Spring Grove, Illinois, a small town that, um, uh, you know, to, to give um, some background on. Uh, so Brian and I, you know, like we said, we're, we're friends in high school. But uh, Brian was, in terms of being one of the most committed people I'd ever seen, joined the cross-country team so that he could be better at being able to run when he joined the army and joined basketball so he could run more and be in shape for the army kind of thing. He was just someone who really would get committed to something and stick with it um, really well. So, uh, well, and then, and then I'll kind of come in later. I was, I went to high school at Richard Burton community high school, uh, went to a small, uh, uh private college in, uh, August, uh, called Augustana college in Rock Island, Illinois, and then, uh, came into Chicago to pursue, um, uh, um, profession in finance, worked at an investment bank for a few years, and then uh, also an investor relations consulting firm. Um, and uh, while I was working at the the investment bank, I kind of realized that, um, you know, as I was learning about investments and in infrastructure and understanding how public companies approach these issues, you know, I really thought, man, if, if only there was a way to be able to tie a lot of these interests into being able to support education infrastructure, um, being able to, you know, help them connect and have transparency in schools and be able to, you know, make those investments. So as I thought about that, you know, I thought of who approach and uh, Brian being just out of the army uh, and, you know, pursuing a degree in entrepreneurship, I knew that if I could get him on board that, um, you know, this is something that we could really see through. And, uh, you know, a year and a half later, here we are uh, launched with, with our first two projects and, um, you know, really starting to try to make an impact. Sure. So what exactly is uh, How Do We and kind of, you kind of give a quick overview of kind of what it is, but like what exactly is it for people that have never heard of you guys? Yeah, so we've created a platform that gives schools transparency into being able to say what they need. So they visit our website, howdowe.org. Uh, they create a profile, just giving some basic information about themselves, uh, that profile is posted to the website. Then from there, they can post improvement projects that either uh, improve the learning environment for students, uh, advance the curriculum, or help support uh, energy technologies and the application therein in the school. So once they post that, it's now free to the world to see, and donors can go onto the website, be able to donate directly to it, 
know where their money is going and know that it's being coordinated with the school administration in mind, that these are principals, vice principals, superintendents are the ones that are uh, setting up the account with us. They're the ones we've been communicating with exclusively because we know that those are the people that are, you know, they're building the budgets. They understand the infrastructure and understand where the efficiencies can be created. Sure. No, I, I think that's great. So have you guys been reaching out to different schools to get them on the platform or how are you guys going about actually, you know, kind of bringing this to the forefront and getting that in front of people at these schools? Right. Um, well, I can answer that. So, sure. so kind of our approach with these schools in these uh, very, very early stages, um, you know, we, we kind of we kind of seek out schools that we, we know would be also a, a great help to work with. OK, um, a lot of you know, it, it's we've met with a lot of schools in the Chicagoland area and the, the two first schools we're working with. The principals are very. Uh, responsive they're they're positive about the idea and that's kind of the support we we look for in these early stages because uh, as the schools know as much as we do that you know we are a, we are a new company we're a startup in chicago sure and uh targeting those schools that are willing to work with us and you know it also gives us the ability to get feedback on on what they enjoy what what can make the process even even more simplistic for schools to sign up? Um, so we, we kind of the, the two schools we're working with currently in Chicago are, are great. Um, you know, it only took them a, a, a short matter of two to three weeks to get all of the pertinent information uh, in regards to uh, quote some contractors and, and getting uh, bank account information set up. And it was kind of very simplistic process. And uh, really, the key to that was the communication with the school. And kind of how that initially is based is uh, we've been going to a lot of uh, local school council meetings, uh, PTA meetings, kind of getting involved with the communities, um, it, being involved with the parents of the students, and uh, kind of kind of building introductions from there. We kind of had to find two schools that would be able to kind of walk through the process with us i mean there's there's a lot of internal especially with larger districts there's a lot of internal systems that have to be complied with um specifically around you know the school's account management you know where the money will be delivered you know we're unique in that the money is delivered to directly to the school um as opposed to any any outside entity so that took some time in the uh you know in the communication you know, we'd, we'd read up online about a lot of these systems, how they worked, but it wasn't until we actually talked to them and really sat down with them that they went through the full process with us. And some schools knew what that process was from previous fundraising campaigns. Others, it was uh, kind of, a, you know, a new, new concept to them. Sure. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. So I'm curious then how you, so you get them on the platform, obviously they kind of promote this to the parents and kind of the public saying we need, you know, a certain thing for, for this school or kind of walk me through how they go about actually, you know, they put up a project, then, then kind of what happens. So then the immediate, um, you know, we, we break it down into three groups, the kind of the immediate community, which like you said, the teachers, the, the parents, the PTA groups, we give them every resource that, that we can to say, you know, hey, here's the easiest way to get the information about out and about with this. We handle all the back end documentation. You don't have to go out and collect checks or anything, just direct people to the site. And then on top of that, we're being active and looking to rally community support from local businesses and individuals, offering, you know, offering unique offerings to them to be able to say, hey, you know, you can take active part in this, be featured on the website, be able to um, you know, market yourself um, as as a supporter of this while driving the support of others in your community. And then the third aspect is kind of the more what we call um, general nonspecific. So we're looking to attract through our connections and, and our active um, outreach on the general national level of groups and people that are supporting public education to be able to attract donations from there as well. Um, and as we continue to add functionality to the website, uh, that's where we want to add being able to have influencers shown and recognized on the website as 
you know, say if there's a specific PTA group that goes out and raises a certain amount of money, you know, you know, however much money, and it's associated with they they were the champions of that project and went out and and rallied the community. That group would be recognized. Hey, everybody, you know, PTA group um, has raised five thousand dollars already for this, you know, for this project specifically. So we really um, look to attract the influencers and make sure everyone's recognized in the effort to really make it a kind of a community, um, a community showing. And, and another thing I wanted to add to that, Kevin, is the, we, we get asked the question a lot and it's a, it's a very great question of, you know, a lot of the communities we work in, uh, may be underfunded. How exactly do we get funds from that immediate community or where, where do we as a, the organization, go out to um, seek these kinds of donations. And, and that's kind of where why we have that three-tier marketing in place. Uh, we, we, we realize, you know, we're, we're here in Chicago. It's a, uh, it's a very big city. Um, so if, if we're working in an area that the, the school is kind of in this underfunded district, um, it's, you know, it's kind of our obligation. We want to be that mediator to go out and do all of the outreach throughout the city, uh, making the whole city of Chicago kind of feel as one very tight-knit community. Yeah, I, I think that's that's great. So for people that don't maybe really know what to do and how to promote this stuff, what types of stuff are you doing to actually spread the message and kind of the, the projects kind of throughout the Chicago area? Our platform makes it really easy to, you know, when you visit uh, any of the project pages, it can be quickly and easily shared on any social media channel. Okay. Um, and it all, all right there at the tips of your fingers. Um, we, you know, we also have our own t- uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, you know, social media followings as well that uh, to, to help promote it. But we, we may try to make it easy as specifically easy to make it all a digital platform to be able to share it socially visit the website get all the documentation that you need in order to yeah if, if you wish to claim it as a try to claim it as a tax deduction you can do that um and uh you know kind of handling it all all on one easy to use online platform to answer your question directly social media is the the easiest way to visit find a project that you like support it tell others that you support it and then just generally spread the word from there no, I, I, I yeah, I, that's kind of what I figured, but I, I thought I would mention it. So I'm curious then to step back a little bit. How did you guys originally kind of decide to like, let's actually build this thing? And what was the kind of r- reasoning that you were just like, you know what, we need to do this, we need to actually get this thing kind of live and in the community? Yeah, so it, it started with... Um... And in September 2015, was visiting or was pulling into a parking lot of a uh, school on the south side that my friend was a special education teacher uh, there. I immediately noticed kind of the building was pretty run down. And then, but more so, I noticed there was a burned down building in front of the school, boarded up in the middle of the, the campus. And it was a school building. I asked uh, my friend what it was. She said it was their cafeteria. It burned down two years ago. And it, so at this point, it's been there for three years, uh, completely unrenovated, just, just sitting there. I thought, man, you know, these, these kids have to come to school every day, you know, and just kind of be reminded of, uh, of you know, the, the neglect that, that exists. And, and, you know, politics aside, if, if there was a way for others to just transparently see this, these are the types of things that schools need on the infrastructure level, that this is, you know, a building that could be repurposed. Um, to have other qualities or be turned right back into a cafeteria to help, you know, alleviate maybe some of the, you know, the food services at that school. And, and I, we knew that this wasn't a isolated thing, that there were schools all over that had issues like this. And, you know, you read about them all the time. So as we were uh, thinking about if you could just create a platform for everyone to be able to see it, make it easy for, and, and more so for, you know, in the coming from a finance background, I knew that, public companies and their corporate governance requirements now, there's a big pressure for companies to be active in supporting social and environmental causes. Sure. Uh, State Street, State Street Global, um, you know, and the recent push uh, by placing the, uh, the girl in front of the Wall Street Bull yeah. to get more women on boards, you know, these types of things that, you know, if they were willing to rally around these issues, 
we want to be there to give them the tool to be able to use to do that. If you got a company like Apple or Google, you know, wanting to support these type of things and understand exactly what they're investing in, they can own it and measure it themselves. We want to help them do that. Sure. No, I I, I love that. I, I think that's great. So did you guys raise some seed money? Did you guys do a friends and family? Did you self-fund? How did you guys kind of get the first version of, of this kind of funded and, and up? We, we were very lucky in finding uh, you know, a core group of people to be able to help us in, in building it. And then from there, it has been uh, uh, Brian and myself bootstrapping along with um, some support from our, our families. Okay. No, that's that's great. So are you guys... And, and oh, also, go ahead, sorry. Well, sorry. No, go well, ahead. I also want to mention, um, right now is actually, so along with the live projects being hosted on our site, we actually do have our Indiegogo um, campaign up and running as well. Um, so we're, we're kind of seeking out funds from there to basically uh, make us more sustainable and ensure that we can carry out all necessary um, um, all necessary um, actions to, uh, to ensure funding for these first uh, school projects we're hosting. Sure. Yeah. So half of half of the funds raised there go to public schools to be able to, you know, it's to help the projects that we have now. But it's also, you know, we can approach schools saying, hey, you know, here's here's some funding to get your project started. You know, let's you know let's really talk about this kind of thing so they understand that you know we're serious. But then on the other half, um, if, as I was kind of mentioning before, we have some really cool new functionalities that we want to add to our website that will make it so much easier for businesses and individuals to be able to find and share it um, and and be recognized. So that's kind of in our, you know, this is a big push to really advance ourselves. Sure. And then how do you guys monetize the platform? Uh, we, we take a very simple, eight, small, we have 8% per donation, similar to any other crowdfunding platform. Um, so, so a donor places a donation, you know, 8% uh, is, is what we maintain, and then the rest uh, is delivered to the public school directly. Got you. Okay. And then, so you have a couple projects on the go um, on the platform right now. What, let's talk about those and kind of what have people started to, you know, add, you know, in the early stage of the of the platform? It's We've had great feedback so far. Uh, we're, the, the first group of projects were, uh, you know, kind of the, some of the best we could have asked for in terms of, um, and, and that's kind of the feedback we've been receiving too, and that for one of the schools, it's a um, upgrading their technology, upgrading their computers to be able to allow them to add new programs around technology. But also these computers are used for uh, their required testing. So oh. all of the students have to be able to use these, these computers and, there are quite a few of them that are completely, they're not completely, but, but are just very out of date and difficult to use. So this is, you know, a prime example of if we're able to fund this project, that this helps the class that's there now. And then for the next few years, you know, potentially, you know, 100 students that come through or, or more. And then the other project is um, focused around a music room, a music program more so, that they, they're able to utilize it. They have some very active, uh, prof professional teachers that are that are working working with it, that they need to be able to um, use it, but then not to serve other classrooms. So they're um, using uh, they're they're fundraising for some soundproofing and other um, other right. ways to help with that. And Brian yeah. has, has been there as well. Yeah. So the uh, the project's just adding on what Mike stated. Um, it's what they want to do is the the music classroom is right above the special education classroom. Okay. And what they want to do is they want to add a suppressive cork flooring. Right. Uh, because we've had both testimonials, and it's actually posted on the project on the website right now, uh, both from the music teacher and the special education teacher. Um, it's very distracting for some of the students down low to focus. And also, uh, it also benefits the um, musical students because of the, uh, the acoustics in the room is, is much more intact with this suppressive cork flooring. Uh, so it's benefiting both parties on that. And I also wanted to add on uh, the, the computer lab upgrade. Uh, I spoke, I, I meet with the uh, principal pretty regularly of the school and 
she had mentioned to me that it's it's very key that these students get um, this is this one um, lab is, is where the students do all the testing and she had mentioned uh, and this has always stuck out to me is she had mentioned that a lot of the students when it comes time to test which is a time uh, it's a time test at the end of the year uh, when they take it they're not even necessarily um, familiar with the technology when they take the test so therefore it's kind of cutting into their their ability to focus on the test rather rather because they're dealing with these technological problems that may occur on the computer. So um, I, I've always thought that really resonated with me uh, sure. just because it, it really does prove that these projects that these administrators are, are coming up with, they are the ones that are firsthand seeing the, the effects that it takes on the students. And those are the, exact types of problems that we we want to fix in, in these public schools sure no i i think that's that's great and i i love what you guys are doing with the whole whole platform and i, I think it's a much needed thing you know in pretty much any city probably even globally you could argue and and so what are your expansion plans? Are you guys planning on just um, do, staying in Chicago for a while? Are you guys going to try to branch out into other states and cities? Or are you just going to kind of see and tweak the platform for a while and then kind of decide when it's you, you guys are ready to move to uh, other cities? We definitely want to focus on Chicago. I mean, for I mean, pretty obvious reasons in terms of the, you know, the budget crises and, and some of the issues we're seeing. It's really... We're, we're treating this as kind of our, um, you know, our, our concept proof and then also kind of ground zero for being able to make an impact directly. I mean, everyone reads about, reads about the issues and understands them so clearly that, um, and with, you know, there's over um, 650, I think, in, in the one district alone that, you know, if, if we can align ourselves and unify with the administration of that group, we can you know, we can start working on a whole, on a very, very specific, you know, targeting projects that are going to have the most effect for the entire district. They're going to draw efficiencies that, that make it easier for, for these budget requirements. Um, so in, in long, long story short to answer your question, we, we're focusing on Chicago for now. Sure. Expansion to other cities are definitely um, something we're open to. And as we, you know, now that we've launched, um, we're absolutely open to to speaking with other other uh, cities, we've heard about Atlanta, Washington D.C. as a couple of areas that um, would likely be willing to align with us. So we're, um, you know, all, all years, but focusing on Chicago for now. Sure, that and, makes sense. And I, Go ahead. I also wanted to add on that um, we are, even though we are focusing on on Chicago specifically right now, um, even at in these stages, we are in early talks with um other school districts even within illinois right, um, this okay. is not not a uh there's really no district requirements in this situation it's um it's really we we want to help all school districts um but focusing on chicago now where we can kind of uh lay down the groundwork uh and, and and really run with it where then we can approach these other cities or other school districts having the exact uh, plans in place that would be most effective. Sure. So you, you mentioned you guys have been kind of reaching out to, to people at the schools like presidents, vice principals and stuff like that. Are, are you guys talking to anybody in kind of, um, you know, the government or, or local city officials and stuff like that? Or is that kind of not really how this stuff kind of happens? Uh, um, Brian, I, I think you can yeah, talk to... Yeah, I, I can. Um, so... So just from the the experiences we've we've had so far, um, you know, and we've even talked to officials in the districts we're working in of, you know, kind of the big the big question that Mike and I had to figure out in these early stages is is how how do we exactly you know the uh, public education is a very tight niche community and and they don't necessarily um, you know. Proving, proving, proving yourself as an outsider is often difficult. And how did we go about that? Of we, we started at the small scale. We were actually recommended by a, uh, another um, education-based company that um, working at the school level in this stage it will be most effective. 
And uh, so that's exactly what we did. Uh, we started going to um, Board of Education meetings, simply meeting the administrators. Uh, and then from there, kind of uh, just cold introductions like that and then setting up meeting times. Uh, so it's really been the, the schools, the, at the school level, it's been most efficient so far um, in regards to uh, types of city officials or government officials helping us. Um, it's, it's there. Um, but I, I think, you know, and Mike and I kind of both realize this, um, having these first projects successfully funded, I think will open a lot more doors for it sure. and, and kind of grasp that attention of, uh, you know, certain, um, governmental officials and, and influencers in the area. No, I, I, th- I think that makes a lot of sense. And, and sometimes like those people are busy too, right? It's sometimes it's not that they don't want to help. It's just, you know, it take it can take some time to book a meeting and kind of get them involved. And sometimes they need permission to do to do certain things. And, and I think it makes a lot of sense what you guys are, are, are doing with that. And I also like the fact that, you know, you guys didn't know these people on, before you started kind of this platform. And you basically are hustling and going to these things to meet the people that you need to meet to make sure the platform's successful. Right. No, and that's exactly it is, um, you know, we fully understand that people have very busy schedules, especially in the field that we're working in. Uh, and, and all we, all we want to do is, is help improve that the whole system overall. Um, you know, if, if we start successfully funding schools, that therefore uh, frees more constraint on an official then to focus on other other um, issues that may be occurring. Sure. Um, so we really do. Uh, Mike and I's overarching goal is to to really improve uh, how how public education is funded. It's um, it's kind of this um, new way of funding schools, and and Mike and I, uh, our our whole team is really excited to get started and kind of get the the public public behind us yeah and, and we know that if we come to them with a with just an idea uh you know if, if we were to go to them with just an idea you know it would probably fall in deaf, deaf ears for for good reasons sure. uh, understandably um you know that they they want they want results they want to see something that works so that's where we focus on the, on the small scale no that that makes a lot of sense so do you guys run into a bit of an issue with kind of the, the summer vacation or is it kind of irrelevant because it's a pretty short period of time? So actually, uh, I could touch on that. Um, it, it actually seems uh, from last year, and I, I'm just basing this off one year of this, um, sure. summer summer vacation, these summer months are actually the busiest. Um, reason being uh, school administrators um, don't don't have uh, students this, right. during the summers. So it kind of frees up their time to kind of lay out plans and um, kind of work with us on a more individual level. Uh, and it, it seems as if it picks up more during the summer months. Okay, interesting. So I'm curious then, how is there any features that you guys are looking to roll out kind of in the near future that you want to talk about that aren't there now or or stuff that you've gotten feedback from your users saying, you know, be really good if you had like these couple of things. Definitely the the, the recognition of and and greater ease of sharing contribution and influence, but also we really want to tie into the local business aspect to give I mean from whether it's your office doing, you know, price matching and you want to be able to show that this was your office that did this, or if you want to be able to, you know, Hey, you did more than $30, you know, you'll have a 15% discount to, you know, our shop with a, you know, with a um, confirmation of your receipt kind of thing, or, you know, of your, of your donation to make the things that are going to draw people in from that community and other communities that are going to help businesses and be able to, you know, I mean, give it, it's it's awesome to be able to help public education, but it's you know to be able to incentivize it you know a little bit further than that, uh, I think would really help us to draw attention to the community and the school as a whole. Sure, no, that that makes a lot of sense. So, how has 
that gone? Like, have you guys started really reaching out to kind of businesses and whatnot to see their interest in this stuff? From our conversations, we've been focusing on, on going to events like, uh, you know, um, commerce events of, of talking to these businesses, you know, directly the owners and, you know, managers of these. And, and it sounds like it's something that they're really kind of hungry for. And that's sure. where we're, you know, focusing on these, these types of systems that would work for them. I actually, I think Brian had an interaction pretty, pretty recently. Yeah, um, I actually, um, just, just uh, earlier this morning, I was actually at a, um, a veteran focused um, benefit, um, kind of talking about bringing in almost as if it was a, uh, a chamber of commerce event. Uh, a lot of local businesses showed up. Uh, there was some press there. Uh, I was not presenting. I was actually supporting a, a, a fellow co-worker um, with his business venture. Sure. Um, but uh, events like that is, is where we're really doing uh, business outreach to, to try to get, uh, especially in Chicagoland area, uh, doing a lot of uh, – going to a lot of networking events. Um, there's nearly a networking event every night that we, we, um, will go to, um, along with that of just building, uh, the relationships, uh, with the local businesses in the area. And then in the, in the more broad sense, we've also, um, contracted and, and been working with a marketing agency that's going to help us launch a more, uh, a broad based marketing campaign, you know, uh, with the more, um, traditional ways of getting our name out there. Um, uh, you know, whether print digital and, and then as well as, uh, um, media placement where, um, and that's all starting likely early next week. Uh, now that we've launched, uh, you know, as of, as of yesterday. So it's, um, you know, new, new big things to come hopefully in these, in these next couple of weeks on that front. Sure. I, I love that. And I, I love how you guys are keep like going to these things and, and, you know, it's, I think a lot of people don't realize that actually doing a startup isn't really like this nine to five thing, Monday to Friday, right? Like you, you, you guys go to all these events, you're meeting with people, you're, you're doing all this stuff, right? And it's, it's a lot of work and it's time consuming, but you know, it's also the most rewarding. Yeah. It's, it's a, a lot of feedback a, that we, you know, it, it's all, so much of it is really, you know, it's great ammunition. It's great. You know, like that's a great idea. Let's figure out a way to build that in. And it's, um, you know, and it's, it really fosters that type of relationship, that, that individual relationship that, that, that leads to another idea of, you know, how, how we're making this better for everyone kind of thing. So it's been uh, definitely been, been rewarding in that sense. And then, Brian, you were saying? Oh, I was, uh, I was almost comically saying it, it's just endless. Um, it's endless in a good way, though. It's um, both Mike and I like being very proactive, and we're, we're very passionate about this um, startup. So it's um, even though it is endless, it's just you can constantly be working on something, making sure, ensuring that functionalities are correct. Um, but the the re reward behind it is not only personally of of achieving a goal, but uh, it's also you know Mike and I always discuss the idea of it's it's we're we're starting a business that is positively positively impacting um, our culture and society in our immediate surroundings, as well as the idea of Mike and I enjoying what we're doing each day. And I think that's important with um, startups is that you, you really have to enjoy what you're doing. Otherwise, I, I don't think it's uh, the right field for an, indiv in, an individual. No, I, I, I couldn't agree with, with you uh, anymore. And, and so I'm, I'm kind of, though, just kind of, I think, to back up a little bit, I think just about you you mentioned just like talking to businesses and getting them involved and passionate about this i think to one of your points basically these these companies want to give back it's just they don't know how to sometimes or they don't have a platform to do it or or kind of a combination of a handful of things and so you know the fact that you guys have a platform and and you're making these relationships with companies it makes them it makes it a lot easier for them to give back because they don't have to, you know, spend a ton of time trying to find things to give back to. Have you found that at least? Oh, yes. I mean, people, I mean, one of the big pieces of feedback that, that we get is people kind of are, you know, thinking about us and as we explain ourselves, you know, they're, they're as business owners, as employees, they want to be able to give back, especially to their immediate community. Sure. There's, I mean, there's a, a ton of, 
uh, you know, amazing uh, nonprofits and groups out there that are supporting education, that are supporting, you know, a whole, um, you know, really range of great causes. But when you give so many times, it's, um, you don't know exactly where it's going. Sure. And that's, and that's where they see, okay, I could be able to know where it's going. I could know, um, you know, how much we gave, the exact impact we made, you know, be able to see from begin, you know, beginning initiation all the way to execution of the project, um, you know, having that. And then also, I mean, this is companies want their name to be known that, you know, hey, we're, we're a company that supports this. We, we are ingrained in this community and we want people to know it. And having that side of the platform is something that's been, you know, a big interest for them as well. Sure. And I also think it helps them in recruiting new employees as well, right? Because I, at least I, I know there's certain industries that have a real hard time, say, recruiting millennials, right? Just because of the type of industries that they're in. But, and, you know, a lot of people expect companies that they work for to give back to the community. And so I, I love kind of that tie in with what you guys are doing with everything. So we're kind of coming to the end of the show. Maybe let's close with mentioning where people can get more information about you guys, check out your projects and, uh, you know, start donating. Absolutely. We have two projects posted on, on the website right now, www.howdowe.org. Um, you can visit, uh, see the schools and the projects right along the top, along the tabs, learn more about us. We also have a blog, uh, blog.howdowe.org. Uh, you can subscribe and, re- you know, kind of read about some of the projects we already have, and that'll be kind of our main source of where we're talking about a lot of the projects as we go through them, posting pictures, videos, things like that, to keep people updated. Um, I would also, we have a lot of great information in our, our pitch video. If you want to learn more about us, you know, as, as people and get to see our faces, you know, you can visit our Indiegogo page um, as well. And then, as as always, we have we have uh, the Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. You know, please visit us um, on those platforms as well. We love hearing the feedback. We love hearing the ideas. You know, we're in a really exciting time of being, you know, flexible and understanding what people really want to see. So, you know, we're always open to ideas and feedback. Perfect, guys. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be on the show, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you, and have a good rest of your day. You too, Thank Kevin. Very much. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll talk soon. Bye. Right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks for listening. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check them out at electricmantra.com. And keep them for the future.